Hello, my name is Nancy Prince, and I'd like to welcome you to my studio and website, which features my on-site and virtual workshops. Now, my specialty is thread painting, and for those of you that don't know what thread painting is all about, or you just need a refresher, then stay tuned. Thread painting is a fun way to embellish your quilt. Your quilt top or stabilizer becomes your canvas. The thread, your medium, and your sewing machine your workhorse. Now, contrary to what you might think, thread painting is very simple. It's like everything else. You just take it one step at a time. Fortunately, machine requirements are very simple. All you need is a straight and zigzag stitch plus an open toe free motion foot. And it can't possibly get any easier than that. For about 95% of my quilts, I use a six inch wooden machine embroidery hoop. Now you need something to thread paint on. First of all, I use two techniques when I thread paint. The first of which is thread painting the design off the quilt. In other words, there is no fabric in this technique. The top layer of this technique consists of Sulky's Sticky Fabric Solvy which is a paper-backed, water-soluble stabilizer and can either be run through your printer or the design can be traced. The center layer consists of two pieces of gray tulle, which is nothing more than bridal veil. The bottom layer consists of two or more layers of another water-soluble stabilizer, such as Aquamesh by OESD, to further stabilize the product. Now, your hoop looks something like this. Design is drawn on top, two layers of tulle in the center, and at least two layers or more of another water-soluble stabilizer on the bottom. So here is my blank canvas I used for a recent project. The thread painting starts here, then a few more thread colors are added. Now I know the clothing doesn't look like much, but have faith in continued thread painting, additional thread colors, and in no time you end up with this lovely lady. Distortion is a huge factor in large designs. Now distortion shows up as ripples along the outside edge of a design or within the design itself. This figure of Richard Henry Lee is almost 20 inches tall, so distortion would be extensive if the clothing was thread painted in one piece. To minimize distortion, the figure was thread painted in 11 pieces. For examples, the individual arms of his coat and individual trousers, his vest, collars, right and left coat fronts, etc. And then individual clothing pieces were put back together like a puzzle. Distortion was kept to a minimum because each part of clothing was small enough that distortion was not a problem. Now here are a few examples of a few more off the quilt designs. Because a blue butterfly is a separate entity, I have the luxury of moving him around the quilt top until I find the perfect spot. As with all thread paintings done off the quilt, dimension is created in the boy fishing just by the addition of each thread color. In the second technique, the design is thread painted right on the fabric or the quilt top. There are three layers in this technique as well. The top layer, again, is the printed design. The middle layer consists of the fabric or quilt top, and the bottom layer, two or more layers of water-soluble sol stabilizer. Again, it is just a matter of thread painting different solid thread colors until the design is complete. You start here, add a few more thread colors, in a few hours, you end up here. Pretty cool, huh? Thread painting is very versatile and can be used in a variety of ways. Now, so far, everything I've shown you includes drawing or tracing of some sort. Should this not be to your liking, how about browsing a quilt shop and looking for beautiful, bold designs or settled black and white fabric? I found this black and white fabric in a quilt shop and the artwork in the fabric gave me the roadmap to thread paint this cute little quilt. Or take this other black and white fabric, and you're going to start here, add a whole lot more thread colors, and this is the completed quilt. 
After teaching thread painting for a number of years, some of my students said they love thread work, but were looking for something that involved a little less time. That is when thread sketching entered the picture. Thread sketching gives you the idea of a design without all the details. For example, I started with this drawing, a little thread was added, and yet a whole lot more thread was added, and this was the finished quilt. Mostly a sketch uses a straight stitch, but from time to time the zigzag stitch makes a cameo appearance. Now these thread sketches again give the essence of the design, but without the entire design being filled. In this quilt you can almost feel, it, feel the chill in the air, and in this fall quilt the pumpkins are just begging to be made into a pumpkin pie. There are so many beautiful fabrics at your local quilt shop just begging for some thread work. This is an example of a beautiful blue and purple panel I embellished with thread. Thread selection is extremely important here to make the quilt stand out. Ready-made fabric sometimes makes the finished project a little easier and sometimes a little faster. How about taking a photo of your beloved pet like the one here of my little dog Izzy and print it on fabric. Choose thread colors at least two shades lighter or darker than the fabric and sketch away. The thread actually en enhances the printed fabric and almost brings little Izzy to life. This was a photo of two of my grandchildren on the day they were actually getting along. Photoshop was used to draw the lines of the figures in the photo and the design was printed on stabilizer and this quilt is the result. Also, try combining thread painting and thread sketching into one project. The thread painted butterfly gives a bold appearance while the thread sketch flower and leaves give a light and airy feeling to it. The object of thread painting is to make the design look as realistic as possible. This photo of a farmer has all the appropriate colors, blue pants, white shirt, gold hat, but the eye can tell something is missing. Add just a bit of shading and highlight and now the farmer looks like this. He looks completely realistic. The same with the cherries, brown stem, green leaves, and red cherries. But the design looks flat because no shading exists to give it form. Add shading and highlight it and the difference is dramatic. And in conclusion, I do hope you will visit my website at www.nancyprince.com and visit my on-site and virtual workshop section. And on-site workshops, obviously I am physically there. But COVID in 2019 and, and 2020 made boarding a plane to fly to distant locations unsafe. Fortunately, Zoom or similar platforms are available to fill this void by providing a space where these workshops and lectures can be presented virtually. While I cannot be physically at your location in a virtual workshop, I hope the way the workshops are conducted will make it seem like I am. Some fun fill workshops, whether on-site or virtual to consider, are my thread pitted landscapes have always been one of my more popular workshops. And students love the shading and blending techniques of embellishing printed fabric with thread painting. While all of my workshops are set up for all levels, try simple thread painting for your first try. Interested in thread sketching? Then try countryside thread sketching. Want to try your hand at thread painting and thread sketching? Combine, then give this workshop a try. Adding thread work to your quilting is a great resource to visually enhance your wall hangings or bed quilts. Thread painting is simple, fun, and with a little practice, you can master the techniques. Thanks for spending a little time with me and I hope to see all of you in a future thread painting or thread sketching workshop.